CES in Las Vegas is regarded as the world's largest consumer technology expo. And this year, the second week of January, saw possibly the biggest CES ever in terms of number of exhibitors. 4,100, including 1,200 startups, and a high proportion of those were all about robots. In fact, it felt as if Las Vegas was being overrun by robots during that week. They rolled through the aisles, they paused at intersections, they carried crates, they guarded entrances, and they drew crowds. And that is part of the problem with Las Vegas. It felt too crowded with both people and robots muscling for attention. But there were quite a few clues, both subtle and obvious, that robots are not quite ready for prime time. And the best clue of all was at the stand of a Chinese robot maker called Galbot. And as I approached it, in fact, I was about to start photographing when one of its robots collapsed right in front of me. And uh, there was no warning that it was happening. And the people at the stand were shocked as the onlookers were. It had to receive a kind of medical attention, which meant its battery had to be uh, recharged. But it was a big reminder that in this era of physical AI, which was the big buzzword of CES 2026, uh, the robotic revolution is not quite there yet. Uh, the gap between polished demos and real-world reliability was a real trip hazard. So CES fatigue became real even for robots. They were to be found in every second hall that you pass through, although the majority were in the North Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center. And to give you a sense of the North Hall, it's a few sports fields. The Americans will say uh, football fields. Uh, we'll probably say uh, rugby fields or football fields, but a different kind of football. But that gives you a sense of the size of a single hall in that convention center. The West Hall, where all the autonomous cars were, was also massive and also had its fair share of uh, robots or at least robotic cars. There were a number of big names like uh, Unix AI with its full-sized humanoids, Wonder 2.0 and Wonder uh, 3.0, and a number of other also uh, big names in uh, robots. But it was almost a kind of same old, same old, because they didn't look a lot different to what they looked like in previous years. So I had a, a chat with Paul Stafford, the CEO of a robotics and physical AI company called Happily. And yeah, it used all those buzzwords. But uh, in fact, he was very clear about the fact that the robotic revolution is not quite here in terms of what is being promised by uh, the likes of uh, Tesla and uh, even uh, Google and Amazon. But the latter is probably a good example of where they really do work. And this is what Paul Stafford said to me. Robots tend to be used in very simple use cases. They're used in highly automated environments where the robot moves from point A to point B. It does that and it doesn't know anything other than A to B. It might be trained to move an object from A to B as well, but little more than that. The moment they share... Uh, unpredictable spaces or shared spaces, the train, the strain shows, says uh, Paul. Uh, when uh, people cross their paths, for example, some of them pause, some of them slow down, and some of them don't know quite what to do. So that technical gap between vision and the sensation of the robot becomes a real uh, chasm. Uh, he says this, bridging the gap between how a human carries out a task and bringing that into a robotic world is extremely complex. A lot of what's being done now uses vision. Cameras see at a relatively slow rate, typically 30 to 6 frames per second. But when you touch something, your biological senses and the haptic loop, that's a physical force feedback loop, are working much better, often at a thousand hertz or more. We never think of that hertz in terms of human movement but it shows the extent to which machine movement is still way behind a human movement. So Happily focuses on that sensation gap. They develop systems that capture human movement 
through touch and force. So they record motion at extremely high precision so that robots can learn from how people actually perform tasks rather than just how they look while doing them. So uh, he said uh, that they have a device that captures your movements in a very, very natural way. You hold it and move as you would when doing a task and that captures movement at extremely high rates. So the bottom line is that the most credible robots at CES shared the assumption that people must remain involved. Warehouse robots work under supervision. Lab robots um, assist technicians rather than replace technicians. And even the service humanoids operate in very defined scenarios. We're not yet seeing care robots picking up human beings uh, when they fall. The human slaps pick up the robots uh, when they fall. And that's the reality of the robotic revolution in 2026.